All right, well, let's review our trade for today. So our first one, what you see here is Lowe's. We bought that put to close it out. And we just did that because Lowe's has earnings coming up. So we don't want to be in a cash secured put position if we can help it going into earnings. Here we see our next trade is Amazon. We're adding to our position here. And we sold the March $92 put. I would like to have sold around the 90 put but the return just wasn't sufficient. So I did feel comfortable going up to 92. As we can see, it's right here in this area where Amazon found support back at the end of January. We see buyers and sellers have been pretty even. Buyers maybe have a slight advantage over the past few weeks, but pretty much even. But I like that Amazon made a higher high here. It also made a higher low, several of them. It did find resistance at this red 200 moving average on the daily chart which is to be expected. Now it's come back down and as expected, it's turned, it's found support here at the green 50 exponential moving average on the daily chart. Uh, the weekly chart doesn't do a whole lot for us. It said we can look at the volume and volume has been pretty nice as far as buyers over the past couple months. So we added to that position and if it does come down, if it does break through support here on this green 50 exponential moving average, which previously noticed this area served as resistance for it, remember resistance, turns into support once broken typically. So we have several areas to serve as support for it and we'll see how the next month goes. The next one, SWK. So this is a final cash secure put option for this position. We now have a full position so we won't, we won't add any more to this position. You see we sold the $85 put and that's right at this green 50 exponential moving average. Um, Stanley has been finding nice support along this green exponential moving average. So just felt comfortable selling it right there at that average moving average. Notice here back in December, November, um, it, this area around 85 served as resistance for it. Once it broke through, it then found support there once, twice, three times. So pretty strong area of support. Of course, anything can happen, but looks good. And we're probably going to be sandwiched in between these two moving averages here, the red 200 and green 50 until it decides which way it's going to break out. Over on the weekly chart we see that this area again served as resistance for it and now it's serving as support for it and there's nice buying volume over the past few months. Now our next trade was rolling Qualcomm here, QCOM. Let's take a look at this chart. We see that it broke out above the red 200 exponential moving average here on this daily chart. It has been finding support there since the end of January. It's been nice green volume here. This area also served as resistance for it back in November and December, this 128 area. And we sold the 125, so we have a little bit of room here. And notice that our green 50 exponential moving average is right at our 125 strike price. The only thing I don't like about this trade in this daily chart is just the gap here. At some point, Qualcomm will probably come down to try and fill this gap. And when it does, it'll, put, it'll be right at or just below our strike price. So we'll just keep an eye on that. But for now, it's finding support at that 200 red exponential moving average on the daily chart. The weekly chart, we see nice green, strong buying volume over the past few months. Broke out above the 200 exponential moving average. Something to notice here is that it, when it's advanced, it really just totally ignored this 200 moving average here. Um, now, that it did serve as support for it here, but that may have just been because it coincided with this support back in October and support from May and March of last year on this weekly chart. But now that it broke through this area here, as we discussed in the previous chart, we, we expected that to serve as support for it. All right, going on to medical properties, MPW. So we just rolled this covered call option out. When I was reviewing trades earlier this week, the March and April covered call options, the, return, the annualized return was about the same. And so if that's going to be the case, then I'd much rather get a larger amount. And that's where we had that, that roll we're sitting out there to roll it from February to April. And we got nice, we got paid nicely, 59 cents per share for that roll. It looks like that $14 error will serve as resistance for it if it tries to advance like it did back in January. And right now, the buyers and sellers, are, you know, sellers probably have a little bit of an advantage here. In the weekly chart, we see the same thing. Sellers definitely have an advantage over the past six months or so. But if it does advance, it's going to run into not only this, this level that serves as support for it, around 14, which should serve as resistance, 
but I'll also end up running into this green 50 exponential moving average on this weekly chart, which is about 1470. It should continue to drop if medical property stays below it. So I feel like we're going to have pretty solid resistance there. Although if they come out with some blowout earnings in the next month, anything can happen. With our T triple Q position, our experimental high volatility position, we're just rolling out that $23 cash secure put option. Notice it's right out of area that serves as support for it. I don't see any reason to roll that up or down right now. There's nice buying volume here in TQQQ over the past several months. And here we see the same thing over here on this weekly chart, although it is running up against resistance, the same resistance that found that it served as back in December and the area that served as support for it back in the summer of last year. So it needs to break through this 200 moving average on both these charts to really help me think that we have finally reached a bottom and are beginning to turn into a bullish market. Now Kroger, ticker symbol KR here, you see we just bought that back for two cents. It has earnings, so we're just getting out of it for now. And finally our last trade of the day in our main ops trading account was Disney. Disney had a nice advance after, after earnings, and so we just took advantage of the opportunity to roll the 110 strike price out for a really nice premium. This is a part of a poor man's covered call position, and we collected $2.60 per share, which is really nice. I thought about rolling it up, but for now, I decided just to go out with that same 110 strike price. It does like it's come down. It's trying to find support at this red 200 exponential moving average. And it was fairly strong volume. This was a very high volume day, February 9th, but it ended up being a red down day, although not red by much, but it has come down since then. Notice that it, it came close to the red 200 exponential moving average and then found resistance there and bounced off of it. So Disney, it looks like it's trying to become bullish, but right now it's not 100% certain that's going to happen. So I decided to roll that strike price out. If we end up needing to roll the call, this call option up, we can always sell an additional put option to help pay for it. So that's our trades for Wednesday, February 15th. We will see what we can find tomorrow and continue to close out these options that expire here in two days.